Uh, so, hi, yeah, my, again, my name is Jason Koo. I am a developer advocate for Neo4j, which is a graph database company. Uh, but I use Streamlit a lot for showcasing demos. And um, yeah, anyways, it's, it's a very fast, easy to use application. So let me uh, jump over to us here. Okay, so here's a Streamlit site. So if you wanted to go get more information, it's streamlit.io. And Streamlit is basically a way of turning Python scripts into shareable web apps. And it has quite a few advantages. It's very fast. It's open source. It's got options for running locally and also has a cloud instance that you could set up so that you can share um, without having to set up like a Heroku instance and whatnot. Uh, it's very ML and data science focused. So it has support for LaTeX and uh, data frames, you know, using pandas. One, uh, one disadvantage of Streamlit though, is that the UI is, um, the general theme is very set, right? So even though it has a lot of widgets for you to create interactive elements very quickly, all the, any Streamlit app that you build is generally gonna look like pretty much any other Streamlit app, right? Okay. Okay, so to, okay, so I'm just showing you the gallery page, so, or one of the examples of a Streamlit app, which probably, not a good idea while I'm streaming. But anyways, this is an example of, of one app that you can kind of play around with. Okay, so uh, to basically install run Streamlit, you're going to need to install, or you're gonna to have to have Python obviously on your system and you're gonna need pip. Um, if, you have, if you're running Python 3.4 or above, of course you got pip already installed. Uh, and next thing you want to have is of course to run in a virtual environment. And I'll just be demonstrating with uh, pip emd. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder here. I'm just going to call it Streamlit. And then what I'm going to do is in Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to go into that folder. Oh, you can't see the dialog box, but anyways, okay, so I'm in the folder and bring up the terminal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is spin up. Uh, so if you don't have pip in uh, pip in the yet, we install it really quickly. Pip, pip, uh, pip install pip in Let's see if I can. All right. Okay, so I have it installed already. So uh, to spin up the shell, it's pip in the shell. Let's see the bottom again. Sorry about that. So bring it up to the top. Okay, once the shell is running. Then if no one else wants to continue screaming, then I will continue. Uh, I was going to install uh, Streamlit. Okay, so easy peasy, just pip install Streamlit. And we'll give this a minute to pull down. Uh, while it's going, I guess I can show you real quickly. Uh, go back to the browser here. So uh, this one would be of interest for hops and actually this um, NLP. Uh, example, this one just breaks down uh, sentences, right? So I want to present without being harassed. Oops, I want to know how to spell harass. Okay, so super quick example. Okay, so Streamlit is installed. Now to check that Streamlit runs on your system, right? All you have to do is just do, um, or you should just do stream it hello. And what this will do is it will spin up a example app uh, to make sure that everything runs okay and kind of give you some additional examples. So what it will do is it will start up, well, if it starts up, it should start up a basically a simple gallery app, kind of like what we looked at uh, earlier on the website. Okay. So in the browser, it will automatically open in the browser, but if it doesn't open, you can just click you know, on, on this local host link or put it in manual into a browser. Okay, so this is what the hello app looks like. And you know, feel free when you have time, uh, or if you do this, just kind of click around, you can see all the kind of basic examples. The only downside of this hello app is that you have no code to look at, right? And it's probably somewhere on your local system, but uh, it's in some sort of share folder that I don't know where it's hiding it, but it is not in the folder that you create to run this. So just be aware of that, that you can see what the end result looks like, but you're not gonna see the code for this. So jump back to IDE time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is gonna create just a real simple uh, app just to show how you get started, right? So, oops. 
And here we're just going to import streamlet and SST for shorthand. And every app can support one title, uh, but you can have as many uh, headers or subheaders, um, text and whatnot. Uh, you can put in markdown as well, which is what I like to do if I'm putting, uh, especially just like a horizontal line, uh, markdown is the easiest way to do that. Okay, so uh, it's a save the code. And what I can do is I can go back to the browser and, oh, wait, okay. Okay, I am still in the Hello app. So let me go back to my ID. This. Okay, so to run the app, I'm just going to do streamlit run and then the name of your um, main Python file. Oops. Uh, streamlit run. Okay, and we'll kick it up in the browser. And we can see here uh, from the comparison of the code, right? Title, subheader, markdown, which does appear in the browser. Now I can just go into the IDE and just start editing. And that browser will update, right? So if I want to put in um, uh, button, okay. it's the title. Okay. Yay. Okay, so if I go back to the browser, you can click rerun, which is just basically refresh, or what's better, or what I prefer is usually just clicking always rerun. Uh, so that every time we update code, this page will just kind of refresh itself. Okay, I think uh, I think hit the five minute mark uh, about ish. Did anyone have any uh, quick questions that I could answer? Have you been able to update uh, like a chart? Uh, let's say there's a button for click me which changes text. Uh, if you have a chart and you pull down a drop down or something like that and change the state of your application, uh, is there a way that you can update the chart in place? Yes, so you can basically use um, any other like. Pythonic method, right? Like, so if you wanted to do some sort of um, uh, a loop, or if you want to do some sort of a timer that that goes and updates the state, okay. um, there is. You can also pull from. So Streamlit will make use of the browser cache, so you can you can basically cache some data there and kind of refresh it. And depending on what you do, that uh, that might kick off a chart refresh. But anyways, yes, there there are options for having a chart kind of. Um, Continuously refresh by itself without you having to refresh the page. Okay, cool. Jeremy, is your Thanks. question kind of like a JavaScript? Like uh, it would pop it into place immediately, the new data? Yeah, I was wondering how much the uh, Streamlit application handles that for you, or uh, is it still something? Uh, Matplotlib's got an animate function which rereads the state on a timer, but I was wondering if it was, you know, Streamlit was uh, event based or something like that. Uh, it seems like there's some button controls, so uh, I need to look more into that. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I found it very easy to use when the user interacts, right? When you're, you're changing an option, you're selecting a select down, you're moving a slider, and then have charts and other um, widgets kind of update. Um, but there's definitely a use case, right, of having some like continuous display that updates by itself, you know, as, you know, outside um, data gets updated. Oh, thank you very much. Cool. Yeah, you're very welcome. Okay, if there's no more questions, then uh, David, I'll hand it. Back yeah, to you. it reminds me of the um, the early days of Perl. There was a CGI.pm that would like spit out a web page for you, and you could edit things really quickly. It's, huh? Is that kind of like <laughs> like you uh, have, I haven't like, used that? Yeah, I haven't used that before. But it, from what you're describing, yeah, it's because I mean, all you're doing is putting down you know objects, and the minute it's written in your script. Uh, what Streamlit is doing is it's constantly rerunning the script whenever someone interfaces with something, right? 